What's going on guys, it's Jeremy, and today we're going to be doing a review of the Mirror Safety CN6M Gas Mask. Gas masks and other seabird related topics are often talked about, but not necessarily always practiced when it comes to the PPE side of things. So as a disclaimer for this video, uh, Mira Safety did reach out to me and provide me with this gas mask and ask me to do a review about it. Nonetheless, I will be completely unbiased. Um, I will always give you guys my honest opinion. If it's good, it's good. If it's not good, it's not good. But thank you Mira Safety for providing this product and allowing me to do this review. As a second disclaimer, I am not a seabird or hazmat professional. I have training and experience with the PPE and everything that goes along with it from both the Marine Corps and now the fire service side. And I've used different gas, ma gas masks and SCBAs for those that are familiar on the fire side uh, on a professional basis. But I've never really d dove into it too much on the civilian side. Now I am not able to test this on the uh, actual seaburn side given that I don't have any type of chemical weapons or a gas chamber or anything like that but there are a few ways that I can relate it to you whether you're a civilian prepper or you're on the professional side and we're going to talk about some of those uh, so what is mirror safety who is mirror safety mirror safety is obviously a seaburn company they make different gas masks and other seaburn related gear they do make a lot of things for the professional side but they also provide things on the civilian side there are a lot of uh, military units and police units, specifically in Europe, who utilize Mira Safety. So there's going to be three steps to this review for me to be able to relate this to you guys to the best of my ability. I'm not going to sit here and talk about a ton of statistics and data and a bunch of verbiage that you could go to their website and read anyway. Nobody wants to sit here and listen to that. Uh, I'm going to try to take this into the field and test it without actually getting too uh, seaburn related. So the first part of this is going to be just the general unboxing, kind of like every other video that you know goes with the gear review. And then we're going to take it to the range. And I'm going to see how this gas mask specifically uh, interacts with both the pistol and rifle platform from some basic fundamental drills to some more dynamic and movement type drills. And then we're going to take it on a hike. We're going to put on some gear. We're going to put the gas mask on and we're going to see how does it fit? Uh, you know, how does it feel when your blood's pumping and your uh, respiratory rate is up and all that kind of stuff? Um, so you you could potentially have to wear a gas mask for a long period of time, and of course be responsible to move and operate. So we're going to try to bring uh, the best uh, field testing per se to you guys uh, that I can. So Mirror Safety Pride predominantly has two different gas masks. They have one like this, which is a full facial piece. Uh, with a wider range of view and then they have the seven which has individual eye goggles um, and really I, I kind of preference this one just being from where I come from on the fire service side I like a wide range of view and I don't like to get tunnel visioned um, so I went with this one I felt like it was the most applicable to uh, the civilian or the shooter and I'm very much looking forward to how the gas mask interacts uh, on the range specifically so what we're going to do is we're just going to go through this unboxing here. I'm going to try to keep the data and the reading to an absolute minimum, but I'm going to do some of that along the line. So what did my uh, order come with if I was ordering this as a customer? Because that's how they sent it. Obviously, we have the 6M gas mask. They provided me with one canister, and then I have this information sheet on the gas canister. So this canister is the NBC77 SOF Seaburn filter canister. I'm not going to read off this entire sheet to you guys, but I will read this small paragraph right underneath this nice picture. The NBC77 SOF filter canister is a combination with a full face mask and mouthpiece assembly, or PAPR, provides reliable protection of air passages against a wide range of harmful and toxic, toxic substances, including all known seaburn agents. Filters are produced with standard round threads according to, insert fancy word, other words known as uh, the NATO standard. So these are NATO standard uh, threadings in a sense. So let's open up some of this. Box came very, very clean. Uh, no damages at all. Very, very information full, uh, filled box. There's a ton of information all the way around here. And there's a little bit of a diagram. So we do have a warning on here. Warning, proper use of this full face mask and deployed filter filter cartridges requires reading and understanding the enclosed instructions 
Respect its limitations and warnings. Misuse may result in sickness or death. Users must be properly trained in the correct use of this product. User accepts all responsibility for necessary training. So as we open it up, that is a very good talking point uh, for us to hit on, is that you have to understand the limits and the purpose of your gear. Just because you put on a gas mask doesn't mean you're not safe from all seaburn threats. A lot of seaburn threats may need to go paired with, um, you know, some sort of full mop suit or some other type of equivalent. You know, so not everything uh, are you going to be able to guard against just from the respiratory side. You may have to do it in other methods. However, for most people, um, this can be very applicable. Think about how many times uh, around the world, regardless of where you're watching this from, you know, tear gas has been deployed um, during riots or something like that, or the constant threat we have of different chemical weapons um, in this modern day of age in the military. So think about all the different uh, possibilities you could foresee using a gas mask. So taking this out, we have our full face piece, very nicely packaged, and that has a little bit of a foam wrapping around it to protect it. And then it also comes with a water canteen, uh, which we will be testing uh, when we do our hike, because I'm not gonna take my face piece off for the entire hike. Um, so any water I wanna drink is gonna come from this. And then of course, some directions. The directions are important. And then it also comes with a serial number card. So you know exactly which gas mask is yours. If you were to run into an issue, you would be able to contact Mira Safety and hopefully resolve the issue. So our actual gas mask, let's open this up. I have never worn a Mira Safety gas mask. So I'm going to attempt to just put this all together um, and we're gonna see where we go from there. So I'm, I'm fairly new to the civilian gas masks as well. Although I do not think it's gonna be a whole lot different from anything that I've used on the professional side, considering this is a professional gas mask. It's got that new, that new Seaburn gear smell. All my professional guys know how that is. That rubber. So, and I could be wrong, and if I am, I'm going to put it noted right here or somewhere right here, but I believe this gas mask comes with an assisted speech diaphragm uh, feature, which basically means, you know, it's, it's, a, it's going to help your speech become clearer as you talk because gas masks and other full facial respiratory systems uh, will, will mutter your, your voice. So that could be an extremely important piece, specifically on the professional side. If you're a person that has to, to operate in a team or on the civilian side, you're in that mag Minuteman side. You know, communication is very big, very important. All right. I haven't had a haircut in a while, guys. Bear with me. Ooh. All right. So looking at our gas mask, like I said before, we went with the full facial piece, big, wide range of view. I like to be able to see things. On the back, we have this mesh backing for uh, holding to the back of your head. But also what's nice about this mesh material that's come with a lot of the newer gas masks um, or full facial respiratory systems is that this is much easier on hair, specifically if you are female, you have longer hair, or if you're a male with longer hair, it's okay. We don't discriminate, guys. Um, this is much nicer on the hair. So very nice, very nice port. Also, our straw already is on our mask. I am going to assume this is detachable if I were to turn something a certain way. Will I break something? I hope not. Maybe I should practice that off camera and read some instructions because I would hate to break that off. However, I don't think that is supposed to dangle there on a normal basis. I could be wrong. So when we look at our gas mask, guys, we are able to add two canisters, but we can operate our gas mask with only one canister. This comes specifically in handy for uh, those that will be using this with any type of um, you know, firearm, specifically a rifle. When it comes to shouldering your weapon, you wouldn't want a large canister blocking your uh, shoulder placement. So you're able to operate these gas masks with just a one-sided canister. Let's open up our canister, speaking of that. Now, I would like to note that though canisters normally say they have a very long shelf life, once you open these, it's best practice not to use these in an actual situation. 
uh, regardless, if it's a, regardless of if it's professional or civilian. And there are, are indicators to show whether your canister is um, no longer good or not. However, I would just keep it in the package and I would keep one out for like training and stuff like that. Um, the ones that you expect to use when it matters most, I would keep those sealed and off to the side uh, for as long as possible. In the event that you do uh, want to keep this protected, you can always put this cap straight back on here. And I'm going to assume, let's try it real quick. I'm gonna assume this just slides right back on. It does. So maybe keep your pieces and once you're done with the training or whatever, you can put this back, uh, put this back in a bag and you know, use it at a later point in time. Very smooth, very simple to attach that. I'm going to assume this is supposed to go just past hands tight, just like most canisters on gas masks do. This was a screw. It's not the uh, like the click-in method a lot of my, my military guys are probably used to. Um, this is just hand tight, lefty righty as normal. All right, let's see here. Force of habit for me to try to seal my mask. That part, I don't know if I actually have to check for a seal or not. I'm sure as you guys can already see, this, this speech diaphragm assister is already working. Obviously, it was pretty easy to put on, and it's pretty well balanced even with my one side canister at the moment. I can see after a certain period of time, it probably would start to feel like my left side is a little heavier. But as it sits on my face right now, completely comfortable. I don't feel don't believe I feel. Let's make sure it's down nice and tight. Yeah, I don't feel any leaks around my seal right now. Uh, there are, your air comes out the bottom here. And as it hits your neck, you may think that you have a, a seal, a break in your seal, but you don't. Your, your, this gas mask is set up for the exhale to come out the bottom of your mask. So as of right now, I would say I have a good, confident, maybe 140 to 150 degree view, left to right. Uh, it's very comfortable. I don't have any complaints about it so far. It's pretty easy to breathe in this. Uh, a lot of people complain that gas masks are harder to breathe in, which of course they are. Gas masks and other... Uh, full facial respiratory uh, pieces are more difficult to breathe in. However, this is this is not too bad so far. Overall, I very much have liked this so far. I'm going to play with it a little bit more off camera, but the next step that we're going to take it to is we're going to take it to the range and see how it interacts with our different weapon platforms. One thing I do want to hit on real quick, guys, because I figured it out once I got off camera, is that obviously... This does not detach your straw, I don't know, or, or your tube, I should say. I don't know why I thought that it did. Uh, I guess you could say I've been out of the gas mask game for a while. This turns your uh, drinking straw inside your mask, so you're able to drink, and then you simply run your tube along the side of the mask, and there's a hook on the side of your uh, eyepiece for you to keep your tube. That way it doesn't just dangle the whole time. But I just wanted to address that real quick uh, since I figured that out off camera. All right, guys, so we're out of the range, and we're going to see how the Mira Safety gas mask interacts or interferes with our ability to use a rifle or a pistol. So like I talked about earlier, one of the nice features of this mask is that you're able to choose whether you want to put your canister on the left or right side of the mask, which comes into great play when we talk about shouldering our rifle, whether we're left or right-handed. So though there will always be some sort of interference from the mask when it comes to getting good eye relief, and you know, uh, finding our sight picture with different optics is gonna be a lot more limited when we can choose which side to put our gas canister on. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some very basic fundamental drills, and then we're gonna do some more dynamic and mobile drills uh, in full kit, and we're just gonna see you know, how things kind of play out with that. The weapon that I'm gonna be using for this is a little bit of a hybrid build. I've got my 11 and a half inch Bravo Company upper on an arrow precision lower. We're using an EOTech 518 with a Vortex magnifier. And then I have my dead air silencer suppressor with an Armageddon uh, suppressor cover. And then for our pistol, I'm gonna be using Glock 17 
with a Holosun red dots and then our TLR1 HL. So let's go ahead and run some drills and kind of see how everything interacts with itself. Right, guys the sun is going down that is the end to our range day overall i very much enjoyed this mask a couple pros only one con that we're going to talk about so first of all uh, i found the mask to be very comfortable throughout the entire portion that I, I wore it um though it really wasn't long in the grand scheme of things i did wear it beginning to end for everything that we filmed and i found it to be very comfortable it didn't rattle around uh very very much it sat well with my helmet I didn't feel any rubbing or anything. So overall, very comfortable mask. Second part that surprised me was it wasn't that bad interacting with uh, the displacement between the mask and getting my shoulder placement, getting that eye relief with uh, my optic on my rifle. I had to kind of tilt my rifle at a 45 degree angle just to kind of find it a little bit better. Um, but other than that, it wasn't that bad. And I don't have a high rise mount for this EOTech. It is the standard mount. So if you're somebody that already, already likes to run a higher mount for like your aim pull, your EOTech, or any other type of red dot on your rifle, you're going to find it's pretty easy uh, to find that good sight picture through this. Uh, using the pistol was no problem at all. Um, I did very much like the large sight picture with the mask. The only downside that I want to talk about is the drinking tube. Um, and not that it was necessarily a huge issue with the mask. However, the securement method for the drinking tube on the right side of the mask, it, it doesn't really want to stay on there very well. So pretty much after every drill, I would have to take this and reclip it to the side of my mask. Not that that's a huge issue, but if it gets caught up in my sling or another part of my gear and I go to make some sort of movement, I don't want to rip my drinking tube off of the mask. So that could be a potential issue. Um, if you were doing something that is a lot less dynamic, um, you're not wearing a helmet, you know, you don't have a rifle sling on or whatever, you probably wouldn't run into that issue. But uh, for somebody that would be doing this, whether you're a civilian or you're on the professional side, definitely something to consider. Um, I think they could find a little bit better method um, to securing this drinking tube to the side of the mask other, other than just kind of the hook method. Uh, but overall, I very much enjoyed the mask when it came to the range. Really wasn't that hard to integrate it with the different uh, platforms we use between the rifle and the pistol. Uh, and I look forward to seeing how it feels comfortability wise on the long hike, which is coming up next. All right, guys, this is the last part of the video. This is the hike portion. So whether you're a professional user and you're going to be expected to wear some sort of gas mask for a long period of time, or you're that civilian prepper, you know, kind of getting out of Dodge of that stereotypical uh, SHTF or that suburban urban fallout kind of situation, you want to know that your gas mask is going to be somewhat comfortable to wear for that prolonged period of time. So we're going to do this hike start to finish wearing the mask. We're not going to take it off at any point in time. And then we're also going to see how easy it is to use the canteen with our mask during the hike. Uh, I've never used this canteen specifically with the mask. So this is going to be what you see is what you get uh, first time trying to use it. Uh, for this hike, I'm going to be wearing my just shy of 30 pound patrol pack, day pack, whatever you want to call it with water and ammo. And then I'm going to be carrying my 16 inch Daniel Defense with a primary arms LPVO and a Vortex Red Dot. And then I have my Glock 19 on my belt. So no battle belts or anything like that. It's just on my normal pants belt. So let's go ahead and get started on this hike and see how it goes. So only a couple minutes into this hike, I can already tell you that it is a little difficult to look in like the woods with these trails and uneven grounds because this mask 
the way it bends right here, it's like giving an effect on the ground to make it seem like it's moving and the elevation is different than I know that it is. So comfortability so far is fine. However, the distortion that it's giving the ground as I look down in the mask makes things a little bit more difficult, especially since it's kind of frosty out on this February day and the trails are a little slick. Right, guys we're about halfway through the hike really just past the halfway point for the distance i want to cover and now we're going to talk about the canteen portion so so far i feel really good there's a few there's a few short negatives we'll talk about at the end of this but so far the mask is comfortable my breathing is fine i mean yeah it's a little hard to hike around with packing a gas mask on but i would say i cardiovascular wise and muscular endurance wise i'm fairly physically fit so it's not a huge deal for me you just suck it up and push on because you know, you can't stop. You know, what are you going to do? So, let's talk about the canteen with the mask. With this gas mask and this canteen, this is the first time I am going to try to drink out of this. So, what you see is what you get. Luckily, our drinking tube is staying connected a lot better this time. As the kids say, good soup. It's a little hard to get this tube down in there. <coughs> and then obviously you gotta suck out all of the air <coughs> from this canteen to get the pressure for the water to come up through the tube. It seems if I squeeze the canteen and push all that air out before I start sucking, I can take a drink a lot longer. Nonetheless, now that I have it plugged in, it's really not that hard to drink out of. You just kind of got to play around with it for a second, got to figure out how it works. Nonetheless, not that bad. So let's get this cleaned up. Let's finish this hike. All right, guys, that is the end of the review. That is the end of our hike. Just over a mile long. I didn't push it a whole lot further, and we'll talk about uh, why here in a second. But overall, uh, the mask was very comfortable during the hike. I never felt like my seal was broken at any point in time. So definitely a, a very big positive there. The negative, which I kind of hit on earlier, was if I look through the bottom of my mask and I'm on uneven terrain, um, there's lots of rocks, mud, whatever it may be. If I look through the bottom of that mask, and I'm not sure why that is, I don't know the science behind it, but the ground becomes very contoured and becomes even more uneven and it's exaggerated, which I would say can be very unsafe. I know through a lot of that portion, uh, I felt kind of unsafe walking around. And uh, the big part of that was I'm no longer able to focus on my surroundings to any extent because I'm focusing on the ground so much. So kind of a negative there with that. However, when I was on the flat range and when I wore it other places uh, in a more you know suburban environment, where the ground's a lot flatter and I don't have to worry about, you know, hiking through rolling hills. I didn't have that problem. So take the good with the bad with that and kind of make your own assumption when it comes with that. Um, hopefully you don't have to wear your gas mask and be rucking it through the woods. If you are, 
you're in a really bad situation and I don't think your gas nasty is really gonna help you long term. But that is all of the parts for the review guys. With the gas mask, I would very much recommend this gas mask. You just need to understand its limits and its capabilities. Big shout out again to Mirror Safety for giving me the opportunity to review this gas mask. This was a very fun video to do. And this is probably one of my first big gear review videos dedicated to one product. So this has been very fun. Thank you for that. If you guys would like to see this gas mask or more details on other Mira Safety gas masks or products, check out the link in the description of this video. Uh, you can go check out all of Mira Safety stuff. As I've said earlier, guys, whether you're on the professional side or the civilian side, you know, take into consideration those types of outside, uh, you know, things that could happen specifically with sea burning, prepare yourself for that. You know, a lot of people want to focus on the basics, but sometimes you have to think outside the box, specifically if you're, you know, one of your uh, urban or suburban preppers in that, you know, those densely populated areas, tear gas, civil unrest, all that kind of stuff, definitely consider one of these gas masks. So if you guys like this content, if there's a type of product you'd like me to uh, like to see me review or specific product, anything like that, Leave it down in the comments below. As always, I try to read the comments to the best of my ability. If you guys want to see the rest of us and you know what we do and what we're trying to inspire people to do, check us out on our website. All of that information is in the description below. As always, guys, train hard, train often.